All right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to take and uh, kind of build upon the Comfy UI uh, episode one, and we're going to get into a little bit more advanced stuff today. Not so much a graph standpoint, but from how to set this up so we can grow our graphs and make things a lot easier. So this is a little bit of a housekeeping video uh, because there's a lot of interesting nuances we can do to make this a lot more efficient, and that's what I want to cover today. All right, to start out with, let's uh, fix the model situation. Now, if you are like me and you have automatic 11, 11 installed as well, you don't want to have duplicates of models laying around. So inside of the base uh, directory for Comfy here, you'll notice that there is a YAML file available called extramodelpaths.yaml. Inside of that YAML file, you'll find that you can point this to your local install for automatic 11.11 for all of your models. This means that Comfy will look in that directory for them and you won't have to duplicate them. This is a pretty big deal, obviously, because some of these checkpoints are very large. Uh, so this minimizes our footprint on our drives. Obviously, once you've updated that, you want to restart Comfy so we can find them. You'll also note that there's an, a custom nodes folder here. We're going to be playing around in here quite a bit. So go ahead and navigate to this now because we're going to go ahead and add the manager. If you notice, I have manager over here. And let's get that installed and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so on Git, there's a Comfy UI manager. This is just another node, but it's going to act like the uh, overall manager. This helps us install extensions and custom nodes a lot easier as well as update Comfy. Uh, so we want to have this installed. I find this to be uh, pretty handy. Uh, so I'll put a link to it down below, but I want to show you how to install it. This installation is going to be very quick, by the way. We're not going to dilly-dally around with it. This uh, method of installation works for any of the custom nodes as well. So if you can't, for some reason, install it with the manager, you can brute force install it this way. Now, you should have probably all be familiar with this, but I'm going to cover it in about 10 seconds anyway. Uh, so what you want to do is you're going to find the uh, custom node that you want. In this case, we're going to use the manager. Go to code and then click on the copy button here. We're going to go back to our custom node directory here. And what I want you to do is here, and this is obviously for Windows, Mac people. I'm sure it's something similar, but I don't have a Mac, so I couldn't tell you. But we're just going to type CMD here, and that's going to open a command window. And it's just simple two-word command from git. It's git pull, and then just paste in what you did. Now, this, this obviously assumes you have git installed. I'll put a link to git as well. Um, git is a pretty powerful uh, source uh, management tool. And you're going to be using it a lot. So just install it. It's not very big. But once you do that, you'll just do this. And it'll go ahead and pull everything down and put it into whatever directory it is that uh, this was in when you called this git pull. This is how you're updating automatic 11.11 right now, probably anyway. Uh, because you can do this on any directory that has this, um, this git capability. And you're going to notice, too, we have like git and GitHub in here, which means that we can probably do a pull against this directory, and it would update these files. This is a very handy way to keep things managed well. Okay, once we get that all done, we can close all this business down and get back to that actual manager. All right, so back inside of Comfy UI, you'll notice you have a manager button now. And if you click on this, uh, there's uh, several options here. Uh, we have the uh, fetch updates and, and so on. These are handy. Installing additional models. So it will show you what you have installed, and it finds right now. And then you can obviously install all these other things. So whatever it is that you like. Now, we can also install custom nodes. And that's uh, one of the ones we're going to be hanging around in. Uh, so right now, these are the custom nodes that I think you kind of need to have uh, to kind of organize your life. And I want to talk about them very briefly, but just so you understand what they are. Uh, first of all, obviously, this is the manager that we just installed, but we kind of brute force installed it. Uh, I want to show you that method because I think it's very useful to have the knowledge of how to use git pull. Uh, even though it's so simple, a lot of people don't know it. Uh, the next one we want is the efficiency nodes. And we'll talk about these quite a bit, but this allows you to reduce the number of noodles we've got kind of wandering around our graphs uh, because it is combined things. For example, some of the samplers have viewers built in. And we saw some of that before, or I talked about it before, but we didn't see it. This actually allows that to happen. So again, it minimizes us having to drag extra things out to see previews. And there's other nodes in here. You can always click on the name, by the way, and it will take you to the Git page for that specific node. Uh, so if there's something you want to learn about it, uh, it'll talk about it right in here. Okay, the nested node builder allows you to combine multiple nodes into a single node. This kind of, uh, in a lot of ways, does what the efficiency nodes do. But obviously, the efficiency nodes are already pre-built. Pre uh, but this allows you to kind of combine nodes together. You find that you're using a lot and uh, just obviously combine them. And then this last one here is the dirty undo redo. Uh, it's called dirty because it's actually taking the entire graph and storing it in memory. Uh, but because they're not very big, it's pretty easy to do. Yes, it's ugly. A developer said he knows that, but he's not going to fix it because it works just fine. So 
it's a great tool to have because sometimes undo inside of this application is not fantastic. And this is a really nice addition, in my opinion. Uh, you may have more luck on a Mac. Maybe it works better for you. But undo, redo for me inside of the base application is tenuous at best. Uh, so these are the ones I think you should have installed to begin with. So once you get those installed, you'll be able to use them, uh, which is pretty handy. Now, if you bring up a graph and you'll notice some of them might be red, that indicates that node is missing. Uh, you can install missing custom nodes. When you click on this button, it's going to bring up the search dialog showing you which ones you did not include that need to be installed to uh, fix the graph. So that's pretty handy if you're troubleshooting something you're dragging in uh, from another project. All right, to show a few of these off, let's start with the efficiency nodes because are pretty cool. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I want to kind of give you an idea as to why this is a great uh, extension or a custom node to install. So I'm going to highlight all of these and we're going to nuke those from space just to make sure. And what I want to do is when you add node and we're going to go down again, I may have nodes installed you don't have. Uh, and then we're going to go to efficiency nodes, sampling, and we're going to load this case sampler in. Now you'll notice that these efficiency nodes have uh, exposed the kind of oftentimes the same outputs or uh, inputs are also exposed as outputs. This is so you can continue graphing without having to run lines in and around this. Uh, you're basically running it through it. Uh, so let's just hook this up real quick. Model works exactly the same way. Expect. Now, once you get this loaded in, we would normally put our VAED code and then we will put the image, save image or whatever. Uh, we don't have to do that in here. We can just go to preview image and enable that. Uh, so there you go. And obviously it has all the other capabilities that we saw um, before, but when you hit Q prompt now, you'll notice that the preview is already down here. Now note, this is not saving the image. So again, if you want to save it, run it off to the side and put a save image note in here. Uh, this will obviously duplicate the preview. Uh, so if you don't want to see the same image twice, uh, you can disable this. Now, obviously this graph may be a lot longer and that's where this would come in handy because you could see uh, part of the graph as it's kind of being worked on. Uh, so if you're looking for kind of your step-by-step -step guidance, the save would be at the end. Uh, so probably you wouldn't be a big deal uh, to eliminate the last one and just use the save version because it'll put a preview under here. Let's just show you what I'm talking about. To demo the thing since I'm making a video of it, you can see it's the same picture. Uh, so obviously, so if this is the last node, you wouldn't probably use this this part. Okay, this other one I want to show you is probably one of the coolest ones, and that's the nested node. Now, note that I would not go gangbusters with this one because if you create a lot of nodes that say do too much in one place, then you're kind of losing the entire idea of keeping this granular. Uh, but in a lot of situations, combining nodes makes a lot of sense. Like the efficiency node, you know, getting rid of these and putting it all in the sampler makes a lot of sense if you plan to preview your steps. Uh, so, for example, in this one, we just highlight uh, these two prompts. We're going to combine them into one control. Uh, so go down. You'll notice there's a nest selected nodes. Click on that. Type in a name. Prompts. Yes, I use that a lot. And uh, so now what this will do is that it obviously combines them. Uh, you do not maintain any of the names, though. If you did rename uh, the title on them, uh, it will not mean it will not keep that. And we can obviously just rename the big one at the top, but the individual controls cannot be renamed. The other cool benefit of this is when you create a custom node like this, our nested node, I should say, inside of your directories where everything is stored. You'll notice that inside of custom nodes, you have the nested node builder, now as a nested node directory, and then you'll see this node is available. What that means is that we can actually use it again. So if we right click, add node, go to nested nodes, you'll see it's available. Uh, so this allows us to kind of use the same control we might build. So in a lot of ways, you're building a custom node, um, but it's not really a custom node, it's just a combined node. Uh, but a nice way to kind of, again, minimize a lot of lines that wander around your graph. Anyway, I thought I would cover those primary ones because those are ones that I use quite often. And as we progress through this series, you're going to wonder, well, how did he do that? How did he combine those nodes together? Um, where did that specific efficient node come from? Well, now you know. And again, we're going to be using Manager to install custom nodes as we go forward. Uh, so just kind of a little break today. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, take care and I'll catch you all next time.